Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. I'm breaking down to bite sized pieces today. Got some fascinating stories about what is going on in the world. First up, the economic fallout from the coronavirus will come in three waves, says a report, and why this could potentially be good for cryptocurrency and digital assets. Also, Bitcoin price to retest $4,200 next week, and there's a sad reason explained by this particular trader. And MoneyGram says it sold $11,300,000 worth of XRP since beginning its partnership with Ripple. Fantastic. And lastly, there's an opinion piece from Coindesk by Osho Ja, and he states, as this crisis worsens, Bitcoin will become a safe haven again. This is a fantastic article. Uh, Osho Ja, if you don't know, is an investor and a data scientist and tech company executive. So what he says has a lot of weight behind it. It's a very lengthy article, and I'm going to summarize it as best I can. And lastly, we'll go over the scam of the day, which we'll do in the second video of uh, today. But for right now, let's jump into today's stories. So first up, before I move on, let's take a look at the market. So the market uh, actually decreased a little bit because it is the only thing that is open. Stock market is not open. None of that stuff is open right now. But cryptocurrency digital assets never stop trading. So here's what we have today. So we're just down 2.5%. Hey, not too bad. Haven't lost a, a huge amount of that. And remember, uh, the S&P 500 over the last month has just gone down, down, down. On Friday, uh, it went. It started at a pretty decent level, 2431. And it's down the floor at 2303. What they're looking for on Monday is, uh, first of all, if it does open up, <clears throat> it will stop immediately because of those circuit breakers. And also we're looking for to see if uh, President Donald Trump and his administration just totally shuts down uh, the market in general. And I did a video about this yesterday. You can check that out. And that'll be very interesting to see where we go. Also, as far as like the gold price, uh, again, it's uh, down over the last 30 days, 8% uh, today, which means, let's see, of course, the last day of trading, it's up uh, less than a percentage point. So great for gold. So we will see exactly what happens. My big thing is that on Monday, we're going to see where this all goes, where cryptocurrency digital assets are going to go. But I got to tell you, if uh, the stock market shuts down, watch out. So let's go to the day stories. Uh, real quick, if you haven't picked up your Brave browser, first of all, it's beautiful. It works fantastic. No ads on that stuff in the background unless you want to get paid to uh, watch ads. I do not want to get paid to watch ads, but you can actually do that for you. There's a description. Uh, there's a link in the description below. You can uh, uh, download the uh, Brave browser using my affiliate link, and uh, that'd be fantastic. Uh, but let's move on to today's stories. So first up, economic fallout from the coronavirus will come in three waves report. Now this is a very scary article, so gird yourself because it's not looking good. So Jan Hatzias, the chief economist at Goldman Sachs, says the firm predicts zero U.S. economic growth in the first two quarters of 2020. That's a no-brainer. This is what he states. We expect U.S. economic activity to contract sharply in the remainder of March and throughout April as virus fears lead consumers and businesses to continue to cut back on spending such as travel, entertainment, and restaurant meals. And I don't care who you are or what you say or what's going on. The coronavirus is on the mind of every single person out there. There's very few people who just chalk it up to it being a joke or, or a hoax or something crazy like that. There's people out there. There's also people who believe that the world is flat. Uh, so you got all kinds, but the majority of the people out there are really worried about this coronavirus. I personally believe that if we uh, were taking the whole global community and directing our efforts laser focused into one uh, type of uh, activity that we need to eradicate, I don't see this lasting that, uh, that long if we take everybody around the globe to focus all their efforts, all their energy, all their brain power into one thing. I think we're going to do okay. So, uh, but even even so, if you're if you think that the coronavirus doesn't play a big impact on the world economically, I think you're out of your mind. Anyhow, moving forward, by the second quarter, Goldman uh, projects a 24% decline in GDP with an uptick of 12% in the third quarter. So the first two quarters, we're looking at January, March, April, May, June. So all the way to June. 
nothing's going to go on. But as uh, so July rolls around, we're going to see an uptick. So that's great news. And it comes back to what we've always talked about, which is you have to understand uh, this market is going to slump and it's going to go down and everything else. You, as a smart investor, may take a look at this and look at it two ways. One, you can panic and short sell and get the heck out. Or the second one is, is you can buy in and use what uh, uh, Warren Buffett said, which is, of course, when others are fearful, you should be greedy. You know, those people are greedy, you should be fearful. So this is essentially when the majority of the money is made, when everything goes down to the floor and nobody has the cojones, the, the ice in their veins to actually buy up all these enormous dips. But the question is, what are you going to do? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep buying on the way down and uh, sit back and see when it goes up in June, July, August. Anyhow, the uh, JP Morgan analysts expect to see a 14% plunge in the GDP in the next three months. Same thing they've been saying. He states, uh, under the Goldman Sachs estimate, the jobs gone would total 14 million. By comparison, a rough total of about 8.7 million jobs disappeared in the Great Recession a decade ago. But those losses were spread out over years. This new job loss, uh, what's going to happen, is going to occur in a single springtime. So again, April, May, June, as this coronavirus starts to take effect, uh, different countries and states are on lockdown. People cannot get to their jobs unless you are a uh, telecommunications worker or you can do your job over the internet. Uh, there's going to be a lot of losses. It's just going to happen. It just has to happen. That's just what it's going to happen. So um, brace yourself because it's going to get bad for a bit. But you have to understand that it will turn around. Anyhow, moving on in the story. The seismic jolt to the economy sparked by city and statewide lockdowns, what I just said, and stay-at-home orders is expected to reverberate. Mark Zandi, the chief economist at Moody's Analytics, who claims that 18% of the U.S. labor force is at risk, says the American economy will be rocked by three massive waves. And this is what he writes. The first is occurring now, and you can feel it all around you yourself. As businesses close and the economy just grinds to a halt, next will be the job losses. And that is a true fact. There are going to be job losses. Now, there is a bill uh, being proposed by, this is in the United States. If you're outside the United States, I don't know exactly what's happening in Europe or in Australia or in China. I have no idea what's going on over there. But for the U.S., um, what they're proposing is they're going to first try to send out money to every uh, taxpayer who makes anywhere between uh, 75000 and below, or there's a limited amount of 99000 And that and that uh, check is supposed to come to you somewhere in the thousand to twelve hundred dollar range. And numbers have been fluctuating greatly between a thousand to two thousand, five hundred per child, a thousand per child. We are not sure. There's another uh, different law that's looking uh, or different bill looking to be passed by Steve Mnuchin. He is a uh, well, he's not passing the law. He's just proposing this is what we could do. Uh, he's looking at also giving money to businesses, to small businesses, big businesses. And uh, as long as they don't lay off their employees, they can get a business loan, which uh, as time goes on will be completely forgiven, meaning you don't have to pay that back. Now, this is just an article I read beforehand, so uh, I can't speak to the authenticity of what's going to happen. Things change all the time, but it is amazing to see how people are or governments are stepping in to take care of their people. We'll see how that works out. Anyhow, yeah, moving on, <clears throat> the third wave will hit when people realize they are worth so much less, particularly the boomers, who are focused on their retirement, Zandy told me. When they realize their nest egg has evaporated in the stock market, they'll go into panic mode and cut back on spending, and that further exacerbates the problem. They will also take money out of the stock market, which is why I believe Donald Trump and his administration will shut the stock market down, and people will not be able to get their money out, sell, buy, anything else. Lastly, it states in an, in, in an article published by the Inquirer, cardiologist mm -hmm. Uh, David J. Goldberg joins other healthcare professionals who are calling upon the government to act quickly. He states, With any great threat to the status quo, there is a certain cognitive dissonance that makes it difficult to comprehend the magnitude of the impending calamity. The novel coronavirus is no exception. While we are all vaguely aware of the potential challenge brought by the combination of rapidly expanding disease prevalence, 
plus the coming shortage of intensive care beds is still hard to fathom exactly what that means. So why did I read that? Why did I talk about just the medical aspect? I mean, besides the obvious. Well, it's because of this last sentence here. It states, while the COVID-19 is highly contagious, coronavirus, a study published by China shows that out of 44,672 coronavirus cases confirmed in the country by mid-February, 81% showed mild symptoms. So here's the thing. You have to understand that China is not going to give you all the information. They're a communist country. They're not going to let out all the information. If they would have, we probably would have been a lot better place. I'm not placing blame here by anybody's feet, but uh, you can see that how important it is for speed when a pandemic comes in. So if we take a look at this, mild symptoms. As we move forward and the testing kits are made available more to the general public, we are going to see the number of people who are infected actually known and it will rise. So we have had celebrities, uh, Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson, his wife. We've had NBA players. We have other people who have been uh, afflicted with this coronavirus. And it's amazing to me that how many of them say, you know, I just felt kind of like a little blase or wasn't just felt tired or had a sore throat. Uh, but then there's that part of the spectrum. And then all the way over here, there's people who, like in Italy, who just are like dying left and right. And they are just, the symptoms become exacerbated. So I don't understand exactly what it all is. There's different theories floated out there. One of which is that there is a different, more deadly strain uh, in Europe and Italy and China, uh, as opposed to what has come over to the Americas, Canada, and even South America. Uh, but I will tell you this, it is an interesting time uh, right here as far as this pandemic. And the question I always have is, why is, is Italy hit so hard? What is going on specifically over there? Uh, it could be that. Uh, I was actually uh, talking to a friend and he had been over in Italy a year ago. And he says, Do you, have you ever been there? And I said, no, I've never been to Italy. He said, look, he goes, it's a very crowded type of place in certain areas, just like every, I, I guess, every big city. And uh, he says, when you have that many people together, he's also, he's also a school teacher. The same thing happens with viruses and bacteria in the school. When kids are packed so close together, we can have the cold or the flu run through the whole system just like that. 60% are affected, 40% are affected. He goes, I remember a couple of years ago, he said we had the strep throat and I went through about half of all the students in no time because everybody's on top of each other. He goes, the same thing is happening in Italy. It's just a small condensed place. Take a look at China, same type of thing. We're also seeing the uh, coronavirus being... Um, not formulated, discovered more so in people in New York. And the reason I think it is, is not because they're so packed in together. There's different cities like that all over the United States, all over the world. The biggest difference is, is that they are pushing for the coronavirus test kits to come in. They're testing more people and finding it out, as opposed to somebody who like a um, Tom Hanks, who's just like, you know what? I have a little sore throat. I have a little fever. I feel a little bit odd. Uh, but not too bad. I don't, I'm not having shortness of breath or feel like I'm going to die. Uh, those people are getting uh, tested, numbers go up, and I believe we're going to see a much higher account of people being actually afflicted with the coronavirus as opposed to people who are actually having the major symptoms and or dying. But we will see, and this is going to affect everything moving forward over the next three to five months. Uh, and we'll see what, exactly what happens with the cryptocurrency market. All right, from there, moving on. Next up, Bitcoin price to retest 4200 next week because of a sad reason. What's the sad reason? Obviously, it's because coronavirus. So this Dutch crypto trader analyst, Michael Van de Pop, admitted that he's mostly bearish on Bitcoin. He says, quite frankly, Bitcoin is acting okay, but the push feels a bit odd. As long as Bitcoin doesn't break and flip 6,800, I'm remaining bearish. Expecting to see retests of 4,200 to 4,800 to occur. All the way down to that much, we will see. Especially since next week should be more panic in countries regarding the coronavirus. This is an interesting time. If we see less amounts of deaths, less amounts of people actually showing symptoms and or being diagnosed with the coronavirus, I can see a big, well, a small turnaround here, but that would probably not be the case as people become in more contact with each other, as the virus not only spreads, but actually starts to 
move past the 48, 72, five day, seven day window and people are starting to develop the actual symptoms, I only see uh, people who are going to complain about the coronavirus or be diagnosed or and or try to receive treatment to skyrocket because it was too late as everybody came in uh, through all these different countries. We didn't know exactly uh, the speed of which we needed to act. Anyhow, moving on, the $6,800 level will only act as an indicator for a confident bullish reversal after a bloody drop. As the price of Bitcoin is nowhere near the splendid splendid level, huh, the holders of an orange coin should brace themselves for another round of painful retests of $4,800 and $4,200. So look, yesterday's video, another trader, another TA person who said it's all about $5,600. Here we got it all about $6,800. So to me... <clears throat> Here's what it comes down to. It really comes down to, again, the Monday stock market, what's gonna happen as far as if this, we're gonna see more cases, less cases, and um, what's gonna happen with all that money that is sloshing around? Are people going to take it all out and panic? Or are they gonna see some type of recovery? I personally don't see much people being uh, more calmer as we get more cases, but I could be wrong. So tell me what you think, uh, what's gonna happen, because uh, these are just my opinions. So tell me what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, MoneyGram says it sold uh, 11 million uh, XRP since beginning its partnership with Ripple. So MoneyGram says it sold 11 million and the latest SEC filing, MoneyGram says it received XRP from Ripple as compensation for using Ripple's on-demand liquidity platform to facilitate cross-border payments. They state, the company is compensated by Ripple in XRP for developing and bringing liquidity to foreign exchange markets facilitated by the ODL platform, on-demand liquidity, or XRP, and providing a reliable level of foreign exchange trading activity. Citing a spokesperson from MoneyGram, the block reveals that the Texas-based firm immediately liquidates all XRP that it receives from Ripple. Remittance firm MoneyGram received 11.3 million worth of XRP from Ripple and incentive payments last year, but it sold those digital assets as soon as it received them, according to a spokesperson. So, having read that, let me ask you, what do you think about this right now? And do you think that this is a sign of a business that doesn't believe in XRP? Or do you see it as something like this? MoneyGram said it's now using XRP to move 10% of its transaction volume between the U.S. and Mexico, which is true. So the question is, why do they sell it? Why did they get rid of XRP at the very low discount prices? Actually, they received it for free as an uh, incentive. Why did they get rid of it if they could have used that later on for their remittance payments? Is it because they don't believe in it? Is it because they don't want it? Or could it be something like the fact that MoneyGram has a problem or had a problem uh, with their stock going lower, with their business sliding down as they were losing market share and they were looking to uh, inject some liquidity into their business? It's interesting. And uh, I can't really tell you, quite honestly. It can go either way. But I have, I have to tell you, though, sometimes when I hear about these stories about XRP, I'm kind of tired about doing these mental gymnastics about what I have to do to justify all these sell-offs. And we see it right here. So we'll see. We will see. I'd like to know what you think. I'm going to reserve my opinion for at this point and sit in the background and let all the information come in uh, during the week and see what happens. Moving on. Last up, as this crisis worsens, Bitcoin become a safe haven again. This is a fantastic article. Osha Ja. Investor, data scientist, tech company executive who enjoys plenty of whatever. So he just, <laughs> I don't want to hear he likes long walks on the beach, but great. He's all about data set. So the thing is with this one, super long. I'm just going to condense it and probably go over this a little bit more in detail later on. But Josh says, having worked in both rates and equities, I've noticed that equities traders tend to ignore moves in rates, and it's unfortunate, a wasteful of a very powerful signal. Specifically, significant or odd movement in short-term market signal shifts in the underlying liquidity needs for market participants. And he starts to talk about the repo, uh, repo or repurchase agreements, and how that is a huge factor into what is going on as far as the economic viability of a nation, especially the United States, as they just have been, um, you know, these repos 
have been sold off like crazy. And it never seems, it's not, there's no stoppage anywhere in sight. Mm -hmm. He states this liquidity crunch and ensuing, ensuing government intervention is laying the foundation for Bitcoin's adoption as a safe haven asset. So if you're not aware, the Fed is printing money like crazy, too wild abandon. Uh, this is, I can't say it never happened before. The Fed prints money all the time, but not to this amount. It's like one trillion, then another trillion. Now we're looking at almost going to, uh, I know we're going above two trillion. We could be hitting three trillion very soon, especially with all that's going to happen as far as like uh, payouts for the um, uh, US taxpayer and for all the loans that they're going to give out and forgive to small businesses. So where's it going to come from? might come from the Fed as they print more money off. So again, very technical stuff. He does here state in the US, QE or quantitative easing, also known as quack economics, also known as printing money, started in November 2008 and ended about six years and $4.5 trillion later. This was just 10 years ago, well, 12 years ago. And now we're doing it again. And we have debt up the wazoo. How is this economically viable? I got to ask you, what do you think? Let me know, because I don't see it. This serves to illustrate that safe haven assets may sell off during a liquidity crunch, but afterwards investors begin to see the need for assets with sound money properties that offer protection from currency devaluation. And I got to tell you, cryptocurrency digital assets are that type of um, asset that we need right at this moment. So last sentence really sums it all up. The money printer is coming. And when that starts, fixed supply assets such as a Bitcoin and gold will do well. The stock market has spoken. It is demanding an economic stimulus and has shown over the past year that without government liquidity injections, it cannot sustain its current growth. And that's the reason why they should stay out of it and just let these recessions come and go. Because when they don't, it just builds up and builds up and builds up until we have a potential depression, not a recession. All right, that's it for today's video. Thanks for sticking with the rants. I really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's gonna be two more that's gonna pop up on your left and right. Not sure which one it is. Curated for your viewing pleasure. But that's it. And uh, thanks for sticking with me. Let's see what happens on Monday. I'll do one more video tonight. We'll go over a scam of the day. And I'll see you uh, tonight on the next.